today uh, we're gonna be changing the the brakes a little bit chilly outside today but we're gonna be changing the rotors and uh, the brake pads on a Santa uh, Santa Fe uh, 2017 so I've got my tools uh, the ro the rotors look really nice but uh, they vibrate uh, you'd think that they're perfect but they're not uh, they look really nice but when you put the pedal down uh, it really vibrates so we're gonna take that wheel off and do the back too we got premium brakes and uh, just standard $20 brake pads um, the whole thing is probably $320 so if you do it yourself instead of paying $1,200 or whatever um, $350 uh, if you get the cheap ones, probably under, uh, probably under 300, 250 or so for everything. So there you have it. On this one, uh, my Cadillac has a 19. This is a 21 millimeter. Uh, so I've got a brake bar here, and uh, a lot of the cars, uh, there's nowhere to put it underneath. Good thing I got a nice long jack, and as you can see, you can put it on the lip, but it doesn't give you much strength. So I put it right under that bolt where the engine, I guess, mount is the whole thing. So I just put it there. It looks like a good place. So let's get to it. Okay, I took the wheel off. And as you can see, the rotor looks perfect. A little lip here, here, but that, that's normal. So, but it's still vibrating. Uh, you could put a micrometer uh, on it. Um, I have one, but I have no way of attaching it. You would attach it to something like here and there. And when you spin it, and if there's a lot of play uh, difference, then the rotor might be bad or even the, the hub. Sometimes you change the rotors and still vibrates because the hub is, is, uh, is um, warped. Okay, there's a, a Phillips screw to hold that place up. There's two bolts here and another one here to take the uh, the sliding pins out. And for that bracket, there's one here and here. Okay, and here there's not too much. I put the tire underneath. Not uh, many places to put uh, the jack there, so I put it on that lip. Um, it looks like it's very thin everywhere. The sockets are 17 and 14. For the sliding pin is a 14 and for the bracket is a 17. For the 17 bolts uh, at the bottom, uh, I use a ratchet, but I use a long extension because I never have strength in my hand. So I just use a, like a gas line pipe or something. Uh, this one here, I might need something else because uh, that bolt right there is in the way. So I can't do it. So maybe I need something in here. Uh, I'll see what I could do. I took the caliper off, uh, a little bit rusted inside. Um, you got the brake pads in here. Uh, they're almost gone. Uh, there's these ones. Uh, you just uh, take them out with a screwdriver. So, and then there's the bottom one, take that out too. I took the brake pads out. Uh, there's a little bit, maybe a month or two left, maybe three. That one's a little bit, uh, actually, more. And that has a little stainless steel plate to push it. And uh, the squeal thing, uh, almost there. Took out the two brackets there. Probably needs to replace it, probably it's in the kit. So all I have to do is hang this one up when I'm working on it. So I'll put a wire here and hook it up to that spring. So that way I don't put too much pressure on the hose. Clean it up a little bit here. And uh, looks okay here. I hanged it up on the spring using a wire. So that way I could work on that bracket. 
Actually, when you take the caliper off and everything, it's much easier to work on that bolt at the bottom. It's really hard to get out even because I didn't even have room with an extension bar. So I'll try it again. If not, I will use... Um, not supposed to, but I don't have enough strength in my arms. I just use a hammer like that. And these are Stanley's and I hammer and stuff and I never broke one yet. Uh, so these are really strong. This is why the bottom one was really stuck. I couldn't even do it with the bar. Uh, but with the hammer, slowly, but it came out really slow. Um, looks like the thread is okay on the other one. There's nothing stripped. But I'll clean all this out because it won't go in very nicely. And put a tiny little bit of maybe uh, a little bit of grease. Because uh, if I put that one in, it's going to be stuck again. And this one, as you can see, the bolt right there uh, is interfering. So I need something else to take that bolt out on top. So I got this uh, different uh, extension, but as you could see, it's round. So if you put, um, let me show you, where is it? Uh, is that 14, 15? Uh, where'd I put it? Hold on. Okay, I got a different extension. Uh, this one um, wobbles, so there should be more room. The thing is, it's too short. So if you still put it in, I'll show you. You put it in, uh, still that bolt, I uh, can't see it too good, but as you could see it's not going in all the way, so I needed a longer one. I didn't have a longer one of the other ones that uh, wobble, uh, like 15 degrees or so, something. I put that on, still no good. Uh, let's see, uh, where is it? Here. Actually, maybe, yeah, but it's not going to spin. It's uh, it's going up. So still that bolt, I could take that bolt out uh, and do it. Or maybe put just a, a normal wrench on it with the hoop and, um, and bang it with the hammer. But uh, it might break. We'll see if I have it. We'll try with this one. So it's pretty long, that wrench, number 17, and the hoop is there. I like it. Uh, I think this one is one, two, three, maybe. We'll see. I think it's like 12. I like to have it as many points as the bolt. That way it's easier, or I mean uh, more tight. Well, we'll bang it and see. Uh, I don't want to do it with that because uh, uh, it might strip the bolt. Okay, that did it. It wasn't as hard as the, the bottom one. The bottom was completely rusted, so I put that wrench on there. You hold the, the socket right there, and then you bang it on on the, um, the wrench there. Okay, interesting. Uh, someone, I think, whoever did it, maybe stripped or something the bolt this is not original uh, the hardness is 10 but it has this uh this um spring washer on it again it's very rusted it didn't want to come out too easy but much easier than the other one um so this is the bracket and uh, let's see if the sliders are okay yeah, they're going back and forth, and then the other one, doing it with one hand. Oh, that one. Yeah, I gotta take it apart. Let me see. Uh, it's going a little bit hard. It's supposed to be easier. So I'll take it apart, clean it up. The best is to put silicone grease on it so that you don't damage the rubber. And the screws go in there that hold. The caliper. Okay. When you look at the thread, it's actually quite a bit rusted. So I gotta do it all nicely on a on a wire wheel. Here's okay. 
but uh, right there it's uh, a lot of cor corrosion I'm gonna take that uh, screw out but even that one has a lot of resistance uh, even it should be already uh, very easy once you loosen it but it's really really hard I got the screw out but it's very rusted that's why there was a lot of resistance I'm going to put a little bit um, clean it up and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on it that was uh, I thought I'm going to break it off uh, this one's a little bit different there's another bolt there uh, that I never saw before usually there's one but there's one and two make sure you take both of them out the second screw didn't give me much problems because it's not that rusted. It was easy to come out, very easy. Okay, the rotor looks nice and shining. Um, well, they got nice uh, ribs there, a little bit different. And I gotta clean up with this with wire brush and put some uh, grease on it. Nobody put any grease on it, and it's all rusted and corroded. So. We got uh, two brake pads. Uh, the big one is always the front, so you can't make a mistake. And this is the smaller one. Uh, they got all the brackets and everything. I'm not sure how much that was. I think it was maybe maybe forty dollars each. Sometimes they're twenty. Don't know. But altogether, with the rotors, with the premium rotors, um, it was about three fifty. Um, as you could see, the bigger box here, I gotta cut it open, would be the front ones. The front discs are always bigger and heavier, and they're, they got the, oh, where's uh, the tape oh, on both sides? Okay. There we go. It's in a nice package. I'm gonna get the degreaser. You could use rubbery alcohol too if you want, in a rag. I got them out. They're very heavy. You can see two bolts here. Oh, they're painted. Oh my god. Oh, that is heavy. Um, okay, let's put it like this and see if they're the same. Yep, they're exactly the same. Is it greasy? Yeah, a little bit, so I'm going to degrease it. The sun went down. I'm going to use this wire brush to clean it all out and put grease on it. That way you don't have to uh, do this again. As you can see, the brush actually is really good because it fits right in between, so I could clean it nice. So I'll do that first. It took me a while to clean it up, like 15 minutes. But what you need, even with the wire brush, there's a lip outside and a lip inside. That's where the rotor sits on. The middle part, not so much. So when you get rusted spots, I couldn't even get it with uh, the wire brush. I had to use a screwdriver and scrape it off. And I'm going to grease it. Uh, I got NTC's uh, grease, copper, from like 30 years ago. I'll, I'll use it. I actually got two. I got this nickel NTC's um, 13 1315 Celsius. I would just use that one. Copper one's good too. So I'll use that one. I put the nickel NTC's all over. Now I'll never rust again. And sometimes it gets stuck on there and you gotta try to get it off because it uh, seizes together with the rust. And I did it around because sometimes when the rim goes on there, uh, it gets stuck and you got to kick the tire to get it off. So I cleaned it all nicely and put the NTCs and it should be good for life. Uh, that stuff doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to decrease the, the rotor with rubbing alcohol. It's much cheaper. It's like 3 or $4 instead of, um, instead of paying for that brake cleaner and it's... Uh, doesn't have any chemicals in it. it. It works. And it's cheaper and doesn't stink. 
not clean at all. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of grease on it. It's uh, painted. Uh, you don't have to clean that part. Uh, just uh, this part here and then on the other side, that's all. When you're putting it on, uh, make sure you align this bolt here and this bolt there. Uh, they're really rusted, one of them anyway, so I'm going to put some... Um, I like using this stuff. Um, it's from Ford. It's about $15 or $13. So first, do it inside because I think it's all rusted inside. So, um, and then we got a wire wheel. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, clean them all up. Actually, for those two, um, I just put uh, the rust penetrating fluid and it should dissolve the rust. It should be okay. Leave it for 10 minutes. It should be okay. The rusted one, I, I took, put it in and put it out a couple of times. Uh, and uh, now it's loose before uh, it was really, really hard. So that one's the, the hard one, but it's okay now. It should be all loose. Uh, that one's easy. Uh, so it's all good. So for those screws, don't try to like really, really screw it in. It has to be really tight, but uh, don't overdo it because it's Phillips and you're going to strip it. So it's just there to hold it. A lot of the cars don't have any of those, uh, but it's much nicer because it, it holds it for you. Uh, if there isn't, it's it's wobbly. So they're just there to, to make it easier for you to put uh, the caliper on. Caliper inside is a little bit rusted, as you could see. I'm going to clean it up on top, and um, I'm going to open the the brake fluid cap on top in the car, and I'm going to use a little clamp and put it back in. I'm going to pop the brake fluid. It looks like there's nothing in it, so that means I need two people to uh, to bleed the brakes I don't think there's anything in there even at low line there's nothing in there so I can't do it by myself so next time we got to bleed the brakes there's probably that's why maybe they're a little bit spongy because there's air in the brakes uh, I can't see it no I think it's empty so if it's empty you gotta bleed the brakes because they'll be spongy You're gonna press that uh, caliper in. I got a a brake kit, but you need you could use a normal clamp. So just uh, uh, push it in. Uh, there's left and right. That's why there's two of them. Uh, one is uh, left thread, and the other one is 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 uh, the right thread. I think it depends what uh, side you're doing, because one you turn left, and then the other one is right. So I'm going to be holding the camera, but as you could see, uh, there's no pressure. It just goes in. So I'm going to press it all the way in. Um, when it's all the way in, you could feel the resistance. Once there's a resistance, you don't have to press it hard. It's, it should be just, it will just stop. Uh, and uh, it's all the way in now. Okay, let's see the sliders. There's always one. I'll do it with the shoe. There's always one that has this um, this rubber at the back. Not sure why. I think that will be maybe the top. Wait, this way. I think it's the top. Anyways, put them back in the way they were. So this one, I'll clean it up and put more grease on it. Silicone grease is the best. I don't know what kind of grease they put on here. So that one's the first one. I'm going to clean it up. And that one, yeah, both of them are really smooth. So it should be alright. And that's the second one. As you can see, I cleaned them up. There's no pitting, no rust, no nothing. So they're perfect. Sometimes they're so rusted. Um, and then uh, your caliper won't push um, on the other side. The outside it will only push from inside. It will wear out uh, your inside the brake pad, not the outside. So these look perfect. I put the nickel copper MTCs. Works good. 
always used it. Make sure there's a lip there. Make sure you put uh, grease in there too. If not, rust gets in there and then the seal doesn't uh, stay on there. It pops off. So make sure you do that. Uh, do the same thing for the other one. Uh, there. Nope. Alright, so we'll put the other one in here. Left handed. And there we go. See, right there, the seal goes on top. If it fills with rust, it's not going to hold. And more water is going to go in there. And then rust completely inside it. So this one is fine. And that one's fine too. So I'm going to put the bracket on. I wish I had new bolts. One is not original. I don't think it's original. Wait, hold on a minute. I think both of them are not original. Um, I got a feeling they're not original. Usually they don't have these uh, these washers at all. Maybe that's why they rust so much. They're not uh, original. You, I don't. I don't usually see them that rusted. And they don't have this um, spring washers. But I'm going to put it on. Uh, i got to clean it up first because it, it's going to strip the thread. Uh, usually there's one piece, not two pieces like that. So never sat it like that. We'll put it on. Maybe we'll get some. Or I don't. Yeah, I don't think these are original. So I'm going to put them in. Okay, i got to clean this up too. Right there the bracket and uh, I put some penetrating fluid inside these because uh, you can't even see threads on here that's how corroded it is I cleaned it all up actually there is no threads there it was all rusted um, this one I can't even take off the <laughs> it rusted to the head then the washer so I'm going to put some penetrating fluid and uh, let it uh, come off. And then maybe I'll, if I could find some new ones. And I'm pretty sure these are not original. Whoever did the job. Probably stripped the bolts. Put new ones in. But these are not auto bolts. They're hard. I think it's number 10. But they shouldn't rust that much. Okay, I think I'm going to reuse those uh, washers. I uh, can't find any and I put a tiny tiny little bit of grease so it doesn't um, Inside it doesn't get seized up again um, some people put um, the temporary uh, uh, Loctite on it not the red one. I think it's blue um, But uh, the, I, don't, I don't want to strip the threads when I try to get it out again So those ones will go back in I cleaned up um, the bracket where the brake pads go in, or the brackets on both sides. So that way it's, it's easy to put in. I put the bracket in, all nice and good. Now I gotta put the brake pads in. We have the kit. Uh, there's a left one and right one. Um, these are all the same, and these are all the same. Uh, there should be holes at the back. Yeah, there's little holes that you put them in. So, on this one is the left driver side front. So, this was on the outside. So, are the outside the same? Uh, yes, they are. They're the same. So these are different. So this one will be this one here. Uh, you need. I don't think you need that bracket. Let me see. Uh, I'll take it off and see. Okay, so I got this uh, little plate. On the old one, it actually fits because these uh, are much smaller diameter. This one is much bigger. It doesn't sit down. So I might have to re-drill them. We'll see. I'm not going to put that bracket on because it doesn't fit in there. I don't want to drill the holes. But it looks like the piston goes right 
even beyond. So what I'm going to do is going to file it a little bit on both sides, uh, just a little bit, just in case it hits these, because these are much smaller. Okay, I put the brackets in. The thing is, the um, they're too close in here. How are they? Oh, right there. That makes a squealing noise. So <laughs> I have to bend them back somehow. Okay, as you could see, the old ones, they have a big gap here. The new ones, um, they're much different. Uh, they're the same, except these part, that part here, touches the, the rotor and it's going to squeal even after I bent it. So I might have to reuse the old ones. As you could see, it's like two millimeters uh, towards. So I might use the other ones. I thought I could just bend it back. I don't think I'll be able to. It's uh, too much of a difference. It's about two mil. So the old brackets, I put them back in and you could see there's uh, a space, a couple millimeters uh, out of focus right there. Uh, a couple millimeters. The other one's touching, rubbing. I'm going to put the outside one, Pro Max. Okay, the brake pads are put in, uh, very easy. Uh, there's a gap in here, and I'll put this on there. Maybe I'll put a little bit of uh, grease on here, or, or file it, it's all rusted, bumpy. It's all rusted, but I'm not gonna spray it because it's gonna melt the seal, and then it's gonna create a hole. So I'm, I think I'm just gonna leave it. You could probably use silicone grease on it. Um, I'm gonna leave it. Uh, it's going to be the way it is. Don't forget to put those springs on. Don't press them down and wear eye protection because uh, they spring up and if you press it down it will just spring right out. So don't forget about those ones. Okay, I tightened those, uh, those two bolts, number 14. And what I was worried about is the piston touching or not touching those two um, little points I, I didn't file them but it looks like it's uh, right against it so it's fine uh, it should be all right yeah it should be good it took me a while but um, the front uh, is done front uh, uh, driver everything's okay um, what I'm going to do is put some, actually it's painted, um, I'll still put a little bit of grease so that way it's, uh, it doesn't rust right there when the salt gets in there. I put the grease all around, it should be okay. Uh, it's all done on this side. When you're putting the rim on, make sure there's no bumps or anything on all these. It looks all smooth. Oh no, right there. That, take it off yeah so go with your finger and uh, you'll know yeah it's awesome that's good I'm gonna put the bolts back in I don't know about this rim but most of the rims they go very easy this one's very 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 tight there's no play at all zero and sometimes it's hard to come off so you gotta kick the tire When you're tightening the the, uh, the nuts, um, first do it without uh, putting it down, so that way the wheel goes right in. Um, what you do is uh, this one, that one, always on the opposite side. And once they're they're nice and snug, let it go. That way the tire goes goes right in. Okay, we're gonna do the back one. Uh, the back uh, left so yeah there's nothing to lift it up on the side so good thing I got a long jack and I uh, I'm gonna do it under that it's thick enough that arm right there I'm gonna lift it up this is the back left it looks like everything's okay there's a big lip actually uh, on there so and the brake pads, I can't really see. I gotta take it off. First, undo the two bolts. 
there's one at the bottom, number 14. Uh, they're pretty easy uh, to do. The other one's at the bottom here. Uh, right there. Looks like they're perfect condition. So it was very easy to get them out. Those uh, bolts are taken out, two of them. Now take those two out. They're pretty easy. Uh, if they're not rusted, if not, it was like the other one. But uh, these ones uh, were very easy to take out. Looks like uh, the brake pads at the back, uh, they're pretty good. Not much wear on them. I will still change them. I think there's uh, another brake inside. We'll see when we take it off. Um, there's two bolts there. I think there are seven things. Actually, they look much smaller. They're probably 14s. Okay, it's number 14 also for this uh, bracket that holds the caliper. And uh, these look fine too. So that's number 14, both of them. Uh, if you look at the springs, this the back one is much smaller than the front one. So you can't make a mistake. A lot of people that put the brakes in, they put this gooey stuff in there. And I don't like that. The sand gets in there and it gets stuck. I don't know if you could see it. I like a dryer, maybe even um, silicone spray on them. Uh, I don't put anything. That way they could slide. Even that one at the back is very hard to get it out. Because once this gooey stuff with sand goes in, it's stuck. It doesn't go back and forth. So we got these brackets again. I got a feeling, yeah, it looks like, I um, can't see it here, but I think they're bigger and uh, longer again. We'll see, we might have to reuse them. Um, they look the same here. So this is the old one. Uh, there's still a little bit left. Oh, that one's a lot. And this one is, has a little bracket too. As this one has notches, no. So we could actually take that little bracket off and put it on there. I think it'll fit no problem. When they designed the car, they weren't thinking, again, that bolt is there. But I got most of it inside on here, so that's okay. So it should be all right. It's a, it's a smaller bolt at the back. I actually had to use an extension little one here. Good thing I had one. Because this is interfering, so in a, in a bar, and it's much easier uh, when you have no strength in your arms because you're not uh, right underneath. The extension I use is the one that is wobbles, but still, even though it's short, um, I have to take this off because um, there's the boot there, it's interfering. So I gotta take the boot off and uh, do it now uh, with the ratchet. Once you do a couple of threads, this wrench actually goes beyond the bolt and now you could do it. But before it was right on the bolt here. So now it's all right. Got to put it in and it should be all right. Again, these bolts are horrible. Maybe they are original because they're similar, but it was hard to get them out. It's so corroded. I got to clean them up again. Um, I usually don't see that. Uh, maybe because they got these, uh, I think I know why. They got these cracks in here uh, on the lock um, washer. And the water goes in and goes right in. Usually there's a lip on there. Once you get it really tight, the water doesn't get inside. But this one it gets inside. So if that's the original, bad design. This one's really hard. Um... To get off i think it's all rusted inside they didn't put any grease on it and um it's very hard to get, get off okay it's off i think it was a little bit rusted there on the lip here uh not too much though i think it's mostly in, in, yeah in here and then you got the parking brake here um it looks all right it's okay you got the little piston there it's very very light um, this one you don't have to screw in is the same you could use a little vice or a um, little clamp and put it back in we got the new one beautiful all painted beautiful nice then we got this old one with the lip let's see 
lift it up and see if they're the same should be yeah they're perfectly the same take a wire brush and make sure that lip this one here outside and that one inside is uh, free of uh, rust so take a wire brush and then put some grease so you never have to clean it again the parking brake uh, put a little bit of um, uh, penetrating fluid on those joints and everything so that way they lose uh, do loosen up and move nicely but don't put any stuff on the, on the outside of the uh, pads because uh, you will destroy them so put a little bit here and at the bottom not too much so that way everything's uh, moving s uh, smoothly uh, when you put the parking brake on so it doesn't get stuck on you the scalloper is very light it's aluminum um, even my set doesn't really fit inside but as long as uh, you have a little clamp you could do it with a little clamp too uh, i got all kinds in here but none of them fit actually inside it's very small it's like a bicycle piston it's pressed in all the way it doesn't look like it but it doesn't go any further so that's fine so uh, we'll leave it on there yeah it's very light Again, we gotta clean the uh, where the brackets go for the pads. We gotta clean it up so that way they don't get stuck in there. Okay, it took me a while. Uh, I cleaned it all out. I used uh, a battery operated with a, a wheel. I think that's brass. But uh, it took me a while. But uh, it's you gotta have it clean. If not, they get stuck. Uh, yeah, at least ten minutes it took me. Still it's in there to make it more clean I'm gonna put some grease on underneath so that way it doesn't rust because once it rusts and bubbles up uh, the brake pad doesn't move anymore it's too it's it gets stuck um, the sliders look okay uh, most people just leave it I'll take it out check them out uh, clean them and put some grease on it and put them back in uh, both of them look okay. There, I cleaned them up. They're the same. The other one had this uh, rubber uh, bushing on here. Okay, they look good. Um, no scars or no um, peeling at all. They're both the same. Um, actually, that one on top has this. And then this one a little bit different, but it doesn't have the rubber like the other one, so, but they look both good. I greased it up. Make sure right there at the bottom you put it in. If it rusts, the water will get in. If uh, you're putting that um, rotor on and it doesn't fit because it's too big, you could adjust it right underneath there. Oh, I can't see it here. There's a jester there. You can make it smaller and then that automatically adjusts when you press the um, your parking brake a few times. So there's the adjuster at the, back, at the bottom. Again, I put a lot of grease on it up, uh, all around so that way it doesn't stick. Ready to put the, the rotor on. Make sure you align these little holes here. There's this hole right there. Um, I'm going to take it off the rubber thing from the old one and uh, put it back in there. It fit no problem. I didn't have to adjust anything. What does it sit here? Oh. Put this uh, rubber thing in here. Um, the Phillips two screws. It's all good. Put a little bit of penetrating fluid there because it was really rusted. And here. Uh, put the brackets in. They don't sit perfectly like the other ones, but it's okay. I cleaned those uh, bolts up. Again, this one is stuck. Uh, the other one's loose. The bracket is on. Now I'm going to put the brake pads on. Uh, don't forget about this bracket. Uh, put it back in there. It fits perfectly on there. So I just put it back in. There's a little groove in here. Uh, right there. There. Okay, the brake pads are in. This one was very easy. Uh, make sure you get a lot of light. Uh, press one up and then down and it should be alright. 
Okay, that um, squealing thing is at the bottom. I put it the way it was before. And uh, don't forget those uh, springs at the back. There's two holes in there, and there, put them in there. Okay, I think those uh, springs are a great idea. A lot of cars don't have it. Uh, lately, I've been seeing them everywhere, and it's really good because they push apart, um, and the other ones drag. Okay, it's all done. Uh, put the two bolts in there, socket number 14. This one was actually uh, much easier to do. So... Uh, do the same thing on both sides, and uh, that's it. Again, make sure um, there is no um, bumps on here. Yeah, that's some. Yeah, right there. Uh, with your finger, and then scrape with a screwdriver. I'll put some uh, grease on there too. Even though it's painted, I put grease on there that that will never rust again, especially on the lip. Because uh, sometimes it rusts and then it won't come off. This is the front uh, passenger side. Uh, it looks like the CV joint axle was replaced because it was bad. So, same thing as the other one. There's 14. The sliders, 14. And then the bracket is um, 17. Same thing as before, you gotta take these uh, springs from out here, uh, hang the caliper, then press it in. Looks like uh, the brake pads will be good for another three months or so, but it'll be winter. I don't wanna be changing in winter. So I got these new ones, they're the same, except um, the notch is there, the diameter is much smaller. And these ones so I can't use this bracket here so, uh, I better reuse these ones because uh, the other ones have this lip way bigger so it uh, hits the rotor so I gotta clean those up for this bolt um, you put your hand out here and your knee underneath and then go up because it's really hard again for the top bolt um, need a wrench you can't do it because of the bolt behind there uh, unless you want to take the bolt out i got a 17 wrench it's very long and then i'm going to just uh get a hammer and hammer it because uh not enough leverage even though it's so long uh those rust i don't know why so much but uh they rust it's very hard to get them out again super rusted i gotta clean them out mm. I think they get rusted, like I said, because they got um, these washers and the water gets in there. Uh, don't forget to take out those, um, those screws. There's two of them. Uh, Phillips, big Phillips, I think number three. Again, very hard to take off. I'm using this hammer and uh, lately uh, hitting it. Uh, yeah, it got stuck again. I think it gets stuck at the lip. There's a big uh, raw spot there and gets stuck on there. I'll, put a, I'll clean it up and uh, put a lot of grease on it. That way I don't have to deal with it again. Put some penetrating fluid that was kind of rusted on there. But then I'm going to put grease after that. Uh, and I did a wire brush. But uh, it's, it takes a while with the wire brush. Got the new rotor. Clean it up, put it on. Okay, I put NTC grease out and I degrease that and I'm going to put it on. Put those two bolts in. Okay, it's in. I got to clean up these bolts and these ones here. And I got to clean up these ones. I'm going to reuse them. Cleaned up the bolts, those brackets. Uh, I cleaned this up. I put uh, penetrating fluid because I still couldn't get uh, some of it in the corners. Got the sliding pins. This one's a little bit used, and this one has the again the rubber seal thing. I'm gonna grease them up and put them back in. Okay, they're greased up. Went in. Oops. And that one went in. 
two bolts are done and the brackets the old ones fit perfectly so there's the bolt at the bottom and then yeah there's that one right there the trick to put those in is actually um, do it on an angle like this and then put it in and it's so easy because if you try to put it together straight uh, you gotta press down this way you don't have to you kind of put it on an angle like this and then it just goes right in same with this one I always try to put it okay let me take it out I always try to put it straight in but uh, if you put it on an angle like this oh it's a little bit blurry uh, and then you just uh, yeah on an angle and then just put put it in I'm gonna press the um, caliper in and then put it on here the calipers in and uh, we're gonna mount it on okay don't forget the springs uh, they really work um, if I try to put the other one on uh, the, the one of the brake pads is coming out so I gotta put the caliper and hold it at the same time okay it's done I put some grease on it it's good make sure uh, the caliper press the brake a couple times and make sure it's uh, it's right against the brake pad because there's two notches there and they're a little bit bigger but uh, I thought I'd have to grind them a little bit but I don't uh, it's fine okay this is the last one rear passenger um, again there's a little thing uh, you gotta take out uh, to transfer over don't forget about these again take them out before you take it out number 14 on the sliders and there's a big bracket okay the brake pads at the back they look pretty good we're going to replace them anyways. Uh, there's two springs. Take them out. Okay, spray it around the lip there. Because that's where it's got stuck. Spray it with, uh, with uh, plant treating fluid. The bottom one is very easy. Put an extension bar and lift it up. Top one is pretty easy too because uh, it doesn't really interfere with that bolt right there. I'm not sure why, but it um, doesn't. And uh, the extension bar is there. Again, very hard to get them out. Super rusted. I think I'm going to rip them off even with the extension bar. Again, clean them up, put them back in. And clean that up too with, with uh, the there to put the brackets in again it was very hard to um, take it off I had to use this hammer and don't hammer it too hard and uh, turn it and uh, hammer it. it took like a couple minutes this one looks pretty clean um, I'm gonna spray it at the joints there so when you put the parking brake it doesn't get stuck again um, looks pretty good I think what got stuck on the lip right there as it was rusted. I don't think it got stuck on the brakes because there's sometimes it gets stuck and there's a lip here, but there's no lip. So I think it's getting stuck because it's uh, rusted right there. I used a little bit of uh, penetrating fluid on all the joints. I got a little bit on the brake. Um, should be all right though. And at the bottom, if it if the rotor doesn't go up, again there's a there's an adjustment you could uh, use to make it smaller. Okay, I put anti seize on it. Um, if it rusts too much, even if you're banging it on the rotor, uh, you could damage the bearing if you get, uh, hit it too hard. So it's good to put a lot of grease. That way, you never have that problem. There's no lip on here. 
if there's a lip there, you have to adjust this one at the bottom uh, for sure because it won't fit. I kind of went a little bit down because once it goes more and more, uh, it's going to drag. So it's automatic. So it goes bigger and bigger. And uh, get the screwdriver and uh, put it down. Okay, looks good. Put that screw in. That one at the bottom. Don't forget to transfer that that uh, rubber thing. From... Oh, this one doesn't have the rubber thing. I think. Nice, it does. Right here. Okay, the screws are in. The rubber thing is in too. Oh, one more thing. If you're screwing these in and it's going in hard, uh, that means the 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 parking brake. Um, it's too tight, you gotta loosen it. It should be easy because it's gonna drag for a while before it gets worn out. Okay, I cleaned the, the bracket. I'm gonna put a little bit of penetrating fluid so the rust all goes away. It's important because uh, they won't sit well. See, there's still a little bit of rust, there's layers and layers. I took most of it off. And the uh, bolts, they're super rusted. Uh, now they're fine. Uh, these ones were fine, the top ones. And the sliders are fine. I'm going to grease them in and put them back in. Okay, I've greased them. And they popped in. There we go. I mounted the bracket. The two bolts at the bottom, right there, one there, and one at the bottom. And I'm going to put the brackets in. Okay, the brackets are in. They don't sit perfectly, but good enough. And again, when you're putting them in, what you do is uh, do it like um, on an angle. Uh, one hand here. But if you put it, same with the other one, you gotta put it on an angle. Oh, I gotta do it with both hands. Gotta keep the bracket. But if you do it on an angle and put it in. Okay, I put both of them in. Now I'm gonna put the springs on top. The springs are in. And I gotta put the piston back in and the caliper over there. It's very light aluminum. Okay, I'm going to put the piston back in and then uh, put those two bolts in and uh, we'll be done. Uh, don't forget uh, that little bracket, it fits. The front one doesn't fit, the back one does. So take it off and put on the new one. All right, it's almost done. Uh, that took a while. It's all this cleaning. I'm going to put some grease on there and put the tire back on and that's it. That's the last one, passenger rear. I put some grease on it, never rust again. And also make sure that you scrape that. If there's any bumps or whatever, then uh, then uh, it's not gonna sit well.